Carson, D. Carson, CPA, MFC on the line. Today we're standing up for the people power potential and concerned about the broken data portals in your business. On the connecting lines, we're supplying de demand meat for labor in your business, thinking about employees and adding the whole lines of labor support within your business. We're also talking about the vendor lines. Now, these are the lines where you have a willing employee walking into your business um, and basically looking for the ways to submit the information to your business so it can come through the data portals, reach your business, and be set up in an efficient manner for you to make educated decisions about who should come in, how they can help, and places like that. Now, this is not a perfect cycle because AI is making advances to help the way we capture the uh, character and text-driven basis in here. So what I mean by that is that on your financial functions, you've got numbers, and that's pretty well mapped out. But this is the world where the OCR data comes in, and that's the text, character, and numerical data that's coming into your business, explaining people, which is a difficult thing, you know, to sum up people and categorize and classify and explain and all those things. Map that information into your business, bring it up to the loop. So I'm not saying it's an entirely easy area, but this is a ripe area for re-engineering, a point where innovation can come in and help business solve problems on the lines of the mismatch of supply and demand and the lines of employees and vendors meeting. And a lot of it is correspondent. I'm not talking about the human capital on, on procurement or the HR lines here. What I'm talking about is the problems with people getting their data into you and how the data cycle is inefficient. What happens is historically was that since HR is not a revenue generating point, it's an expense line, there was probably some inefficiency and we weren't in the times where it was a critical need. But we are now coming back to a point where it's pretty important to re-engineer these lines. Um, to fix it, and I'll tell you why. You've got a data portal, which is the entrance point where you can get su the supply to help support your business. Now, even if it's a time where there's tons of supply and there's many people out in the marketplace, that's still of no value to your business if you cannot capture the information about who they are, where they are, what they can bring, and what they can offer. If your business is grossly inefficient to work with a system here that maps employees in or vendors in, then you've got a lot of complications because your competitive ability to meet supply and match that supply to your demand is not as good as the next guy. So what's happening right now in the HR innovation lines is there's two things we observe. In the minority of cases right now, we're observing that there are people with lean vendor portals. What lean vendor portals mean is that an employee or a vendor can come to your business, can find their way to where they need to put data in, and they can readily map the data forms and filings through the data portal lift it up to your business. Ideally, this is not through an uplift form, which is your form of all these different data entry millions of steps and hoops to jump through. Perhaps it's a PDF form over here where it basically has the statistical attributes, allows them to simply fill out a PDF, load it up, that PDF is read with OCR and brought into your business. Or some other template where people can fill in you know, rough data but not have to walk through that cumbersome line that certain systems have done a very bad job. There's a lot of really bad HR systems out there that are very cumbersome in the data acquisition cycle. Now, you may not care about that because it's not immediately apparent to you how that costs your business, but I'm going to tell you it most certainly costs you high-quality talent and solutions that can help your business in fast and rapid ways because the majority of people, and especially highly intelligent people with demanding schedules and needs, I'm sure you can relate, are people that want to come to this data portal and they want to find an easy way to get you the information you need so you can capture it, acquire the data, have it in a database in your system and have it ready to read from. What can happen here, we're going to talk a little bit about experiences and a little bit about inefficiencies and then we'll talk about the potential of what could be and this will be one of many series on HR and the vendor portals because believe me this is an area where there's a lot of opportunity for innovation and renewal so we're just starting to think through the lines and bring it out to you points we can help and put it out there in the open so people with the skills to get in there to help on teamwork or where we can map in and help you on teamwork to get it done let's fix these broken employee and vendor portals they're overdue for a, re for a rework and for a fix on the lines so here's what's happening to mobile age people like mobile technology people have a short attention span they want to get things done quick nobody but nobody wants to come to an entity when they have an economic need to say okay I'm here with supply do you have the demand? They want to waste a lot of time on you. They want to come to your business. They want to quickly give you the information they need. And then they got to move on to other points. Nobody wants to sit here for many years in the data portals. And when we come to this, what we see today in the minority is that there are some lean portals. Some people have done a really good job. And I want to name examples, but I don't want to be unfair in doing that. Some really good portals are ones where you can just go in there, lift up your data. 
Come on, it's a really simple thing. All you've got there is a Word file that covers your resume. It has some basic attributes and data. Good. Bring it in. Let me upload it. Let me plug it in and upload to your business. Good thing. I don't want to spend a day in a lifetime there. Employees that come in that are interested to meet your business, even and especially more so, the more educated, the more talented they are, the less they want to spend time fooling around with inefficient technology. This is a mobile age of mobile technology that can be used to make all of these processes efficient and nobody, especially people with demanding lives, high talent and a lot of ability to do things, do they want to spend years in a day making data entry up to your business. Now you might get people to do it, but I'm going to tell you that the people that really have strong skills and are thinking wisely about their time wouldn't do it. Not because they don't like you, not because they don't want to, but just because it's so cumbersome in some cases to upload the data in these cycles. So what can happen? You can have on the lean side a good portal, easy enter the data. I'm sure what happens with that data is it maps into data pools within your business. You take the header data, the contact data, you get some attributes. To some degree you have an algorithm of AI that can put out some good intelligence on the inside of where it goes and then you've got a nice time efficient process. Congratulations to you. If you've got a lean process, we stop in the conversation of the employee portal there because you've done it the right way. You've created a portal where talent out here, a man or a woman with great skills, can come to your business, can submit their resume, CV, up into your data portal. That data portal is nice and easy. It's a clean system, maps everything, picks it up to your entity. And now what's the benefit you have? You have the benefit of a data lake. In your data lake about human capital to support the supply and demand, you've just caught the data about a really good person here is really smart, came in, realized you had an efficient process. So they went from A to Z. They jumped through the hoops. Maybe they had a, a page or two of quick entries. But ideally, you don't even need that because in reality, let's face it, all those small points of data detail entry slow people down on providing their background to you, and half the time you don't even use it. So what's the purpose in asking for data that you're not going to use later on? An employee will be happy to fill that out for you later in the hire cycle, but I would recommend when they're first presenting their skills, leave that stuff away and let them put it to you as you choose to move forward with their talent. It'll be a better match for you, it'll be less time consumptive, and it'll help you on the way. Now, on the next point in the line, there are points where this comes to be inefficient. You can tell I don't feel very well about this because I'm telling you I've seen the complications with this and I hear about it from people all the time. They're not happy with it. There's another line here which is a vendor portal. Now, a vendor portal, why it's, why it's relevant to human capital is because vendors are people that will bring you one or more than one um, people with specialized skills to help your business. And they should have some access to find an easy way to just bring their data to you some sort of unified form for vendor data entry makes sense that has some attributes has maybe you know what are your top five skills or whatever um, the type of lines where they can help and map that into the skills you know what's your data site what's your you know social presence whatever it is just get that stuff quickly in there the first point on that complication is obfuse how does it help procurement if this is a case of a vendor going b2b to help your business out they come and they can't find the data portal. You first got to find that data entry portal. I'm not sure why businesses are hiding it. I don't really think it helps you to keep from getting hacked. If someone wants to find a way or a pathway into your system, they're going to find that pathway. So that I can't see why there's value in obfuscating the vendor data entry portal. Rather, what should happen is you should make it accessible the same as your HR lines are. You're going for employment? Good. Go there. You're a vendor? Go to this other line. By making it obfuse, you hurt yourself on supply and demand. If you don't know who your competitive options are out there, how can you price your business and projects? How do your RFPs work in a way that it's helping you make the right economic decisions? And how do you know that you're not just getting the handpicked people that might be a little bit more expensive? I'm going to tell you that for as long as we don't fix the vendor portals, you're going to have problems of inefficiency, and you've also got some suspect risk that you've got people working your business that should be working for efficiency that may be more focused on their bottom line than getting you the efficient labor that you need to meet demand there. And that's going to hurt you because it's going to cut back on, on the efficiency of the match in supply and demand. So, looking at these lines, thinking about the data portals, the things that can happen that are inefficient for both vendors and employees over here would be the obfuse lines that are hidden or awkward lines. You get in there and you've got 20 pages of data update. Who has the time in this day and age of mobile technology and lean efficiency to page through 20 pages of this and that? It just doesn't make sense and there has to be a better way. The better way I would suspect is to get over here a data entry form. You let people come to your business and you have class A or class B data entry form. Class A data entry form is an employee form. 
in a consistent format where they can just go through it and with the simplicity of some program like Word or Excel, type in that data, then bring that template, upload it, and let your technology do all that filling out of stuff. There's no reason why someone needs to come into your data portal, run for 10 to 20 pages of data entry. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but sometimes it really seems like that much fun to get to this ultimate line for your entity. Does that help you? No. There may be a thought that if you're alienated at the data portal, it cuts down to people and, hey, if they don't go through here, they didn't really want to get to there. I don't think that's entirely true. I think you could have some very intelligent people come to your data portal and they're like, I want to help, I want to do this, and they're like, this is just not worth it. I'm spending all this time, I've just spent half an hour trying to upload my data to your portal in an information age where there's people out here where I can just go in, readily enter the data, have it up, and then it's into your data lake. You don't care how long it takes me here, and it doesn't help me or you if you alienate someone here. What happens is that you lose competitive data that helps in supply and demand. Your data lake is underpopulated with available candidates and employees and vendor pools. And what happens is ultimately you've hurt yourself. You've created a position that's time consumptive, it's inefficient, and it will alienate talent. Guess what? If your HR portal or your vendor portal is a difficult or obtuse portal, it kind of reflects on technology within the organization. Your people that are moving quickly with those data lines, it's not to hurt feelings, but they're going to move on. They're going to find this someone over here with lean technology, has a nice smooth process and entity, and it kind of speaks to it. Nobody wants complications. You don't want the complications on your side, and neither does the supply side want the complications. They just want to give you the data and move on. So, <coughs> these are quick lines. I'm thinking about the broken data portals, there's definitely challenges on the HR and the vendor portals. Vendor portals are obfuse, they're not easily found, and both employee and vendor data portals have complicated lines that would be much better served by template data entry. Just give us this generic entry, the value of template entry, it's like a survey. You use survey level data to populate your data lake, which is where all this data portal goes up into and have that data lake be better defined and consistent statistical attributes that are going to add value to guess what? The supply and demand side, to match supply and demand. So when we come back to this, we're going to talk about some really simple things. It's the efficient match of supply and demand, keep it time efficient and convenient on design, work with automated and effective pathways, and that means like templates that are standardized for the data load, bring data to the data lake for either employees or vendors. All you have to do is just think about what data helps you in the internal entity data pool to better assess this talent and how it can help you. And once you've done that, it's easy enough to design a template that'll just, hey, take this home, upload it, load it to my portal, you're done. No 10 pages of entry, none of that stuff. That stuff's got to go away. we got to cut that out. Then, at the, at the end, you know what the risk is in here? You're alienating high-quality talent. For as long as there's someone with a lean data portal, that's a competitive advantage. No employee wants to go through 16 million hoops to jump through. They will do it, but in the frustration of the process, the most highly talented people with the ability to just go somewhere and pick and choose their direction are not going to waste their time on your 20 pages of entry over here. It's just not going to happen. So I'm telling you that your ability to match supply and demand and find the best of talent is inhibited over here when you've got a grossly inefficient process. So I'm Dean Carson, this is D. Carson CPA on the Peeper Power Potential. My intent is to share